All right. So welcome, guys. I'm going to go through here um, with y'all over this review for the six weeks test. Um, I'm going to probably do most of the even ones with you guys. I might do a couple of the odds if I think they're, um, you know, pretty important. So I'm going ahead and get started. Another thing that you should do is go on Canvas and review, or if you were not here last Friday, um, watch the constructions videos that I put up. Okay, so watch the construction videos. They're on uh, parallel and perpendicular lines, okay? You just got to be able to watch them and recognize the pictures that are made from doing those constructions. So that's something that I would go do. All right. So first one I'll do is number two here. So it says draw two lines and a transversal. So there's our lines and there's our transversal. Now I'm just drawing this because we only need a general picture. You know, we don't really know exactly how our lines look, but this is something to help us here. Now they want us to label two and four as alternate interior angles. So we really have two choices for two and four, but I'm just going to do one. So we'll do two right here, and we'll do four right there. Those are alternate interior angles. And then they also want us to do two and eight as corresponding angles. So look here at two. My only option for two to be corresponding is right down here. So that's number eight. And so that's it. That's all you got to do on that one. Okay, question four. Find the missing angle measures based on the diagram below. All right. So we know right here, this one's 120. I'm going to start off with my corresponding angles because I know corresponding angles are congruent. So angle 1 corresponds to this angle, this 120 degree angle. So I know that angle 1 is 120 degrees. So right there, 120. Now angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. So I know that angle 3 is also 120 degrees. All right, so now we got to find out the other ones. Angles uh, 1 and 4, they make this straight line. They're a linear pair. So i got to figure out what I need to add to 120 to get 180. So 180 minus 120 is 60. So angle 4 is 60. Angle 4 and angle 2 are con uh, vertical angles, so they're congruent. So angle 2 is also 60. And then if you notice, angle 2 and angle 5, they are corresponding angles. So angle 5 is also 60. Okay, question 6. If Main Street runs parallel to Smith Street and Avenue T crosses both of them, the angles formed at the corner of Sue's and Joe's houses are classified as what type of angles? So here's Sue and there's Joe. So look at that. They're both between the parallel lines, but they're on different sides of this transversal. So they are alternate interior angles. All right, question eight. Uh, eight and nine go with this diagram down here. So it says the measure of angle ADE. Guys, you got to trace this out. ADE. Now, what corner did we trace? That one right there. So we want to know the measure of angle ADE. If you look, these lines that we have here, there are parallel lines. So there's that, and there's that. And then this line, the one that's connected to both angles, that's our transversal. So you can kind of ignore this part of the picture. You just need this stuff right here. So 78 and this angle. I can see their corresponding angles. So since they're corresponding angles, I know that they are congruent. So this one right here has to also be 78 degrees. So ADE is 78 degrees because uh, corresponding angles. Okay. And that would be angle D, B, C, and ADE. Those are the corresponding ones. All right, question 10. Find the missing information. So they tell us angle B is 3x minus 10. So that's this one right here. So 3x minus 10. 
and they tell us the angle CDE is X plus 40. So CDE, that's this one. That's X plus 40. Now, if you look, these are what kind of angles? Corresponding. So they should be equal. So 3X minus 10 equals X plus 40. And so we just solve for X. So minus X minus X plus 10 plus 10. So 3x minus x, that's 2x equals, and 40 plus 10 is 50, so x is 25. But now we want the measure of angle B and the measure of angle C, D, E. So we have to plug in our x's here. So we'll do 3 times 25 minus 10. 3 times 25 is 75 minus 10, that's 65. And then we know from here... 25 plus 40, well, it should get us 65, and 25 plus 40 is 65. So we were correct there. All right, question 12, we're looking over here at this map picture. It says that um, Nicholson Street and Cedar Street are parallel, and they want us to use the map to answer the question, so angle 8 and 10. So here's 8, and there's 10. What are those examples of? Well, they're inside my lines, but they're on opposite sides of the transversal, so they are alternate interior angles. Okay, so question 14 here. It says draw two parallel lines. So here's A and B, cut by transversal, okay, and then they said mark angle 1 and angle 2 as same side interior. Now again, we have two options, either we can put them on this side, over here on the left side, or we can put them on the right side, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just saying here's angle 1 and there's angle 2, they're same side interior. Now they said angle 1 is 5x minus 95. And angle 2 is x plus 20. Now they said to find the value of x. Same side interior. Are they congruent or do they add to 180? These are adding to 180. So you got to write 5x minus 95 plus x plus 20 equals 180. And then now we solve for x. All this stuff over here on this side, we're just combining it. There is no... Um, subtracting to move things to the other side or trying to cancel things out with the opposite. We are just adding them together. So 5x plus x, that is 6x. Then you have a negative 95 and a positive 20. So that's like 95 minus 20, but we're going to stay negative. So that's minus 75, and that's equal to 180. And so then, now we can start moving stuff. So I'm going to add 75. Add 75, so we get 6x equals, when you're on 5, make 5, 8, and 7, that's 15, carry that 1, so 255, and divide by 6, divide by 6, we get x is 42.5. X is going to be 42.5. And that's our answer. Okay, next one. Let's see here. All right. Now we're on spherical geometry and uh, Euclidean geometry. Remember, Euclidean is exactly equal to 180. Spherical is greater than 180. So it says three angle measures of a triangle are given. Does the triangle exist in Euclidean, spherical, or neither? So we have to add these three things together. So 128 plus 85, that gives us 213, and then we add 30, and that gives us 243. So 243 is greater than 180, so it's spherical. Okay, now number 18. 
two, two angles of a triangle measure 36 and 96 degrees respectively, what would the third angle measurement be for the triangle to exist in Euclidean geometry and what would it be for spherical? So we have to add our 36 and our 96 together. So that gives us 132. And then we'll take 180 and we subtract off the 132. When we do that, we get 48. So this is for Euclidean. So our Euclidean one has to be at least, has to be 48 exactly. So we can't choose A and we can't choose B. It's always going to be Euclidean and then spherical. Okay, so we, we have C or D. Now we have to remember spherical, the three angles have to add up to be more than 180. So the third angle in spherical has to be more than 48. So if you look at your answer choices, the only one that fits is C. All right, exterior angle theorem, question 20. Solve for x. The one on the outside is equal to these two on the inside added together. So 100 equals 2x plus 3 plus 51. So 100 equals 2x plus 54. And so then we'll go on ahead and we will subtract 54 from both sides. So we get 2x is equal to uh, 46. So divide by 2, divide by 2. x is 23. Okay, 22. Using the exterior angle theorem, determine the relationship of the given diagram. Okay, the one on the outside is equal to these two added together. So I'm going to look for something that's equal to 24x plus 8. Okay, it's not equal to 24x plus 8. Here, not equal to 24x plus 8. Here, nope. This one, oh, is it equal to 24x plus 8? Yes. Are we adding the two on the inside together? Yes. So answer choice D. Okay, these ones down here, these are just some notes. Uh, you can do some practice on these to kind of help you a little bit, but it's reminding you of just the different um, postulates you can use to prove triangles congruent. So number 24 here. 24 is kind of special because you got right here, these are parallel lines, okay? These markings do not mean that the sides are congruent. It just means that the sides are parallel. So now we have to remember those are parallel lines. And both of these lines here that make up the sides of the triangles, those are transversals. So we can use that to determine the angles. So, and we're going to look at them separately. So the first one we'll look at is this diagonal one. We have this angle right here, and it's alternate interior one right up there. Those two are congruent. Now we'll look at this transversal right here, this inside one, and it's alternate interior, this one. Those are going to be congruent, and the reason why they're congruent is because we have the parallel lines on the outsides. Not that those sides are equal, they're just parallel. So you have these two angles. Now we also have right here, in the middle, these vertical angles. So those are congruent. So you have several angles congruent, and then we only have these one sides congruent. You cannot mark any other sides of this triangle congruent. They have not told you anything else about the sides. So we need to go, and we need to see what we can use to prove here. Side, side, side. Can we use side, side, side? No. Okay. Angle, angle, angle. Is that one used to prove that they are congruent? No, you cannot use that one. So now we have angle, side, angle, or side, side, angle. Look at this one. Angle, side, angle. Can that be used? Yes. Also, remember, side, side, angle, is that a valid one to use? No. So you could get rid of that anyway. So it's angle, side, angle. So we found more angles are congruent than we really need, but we could see that you could do angle, side, angle, or, you know, maybe you didn't have these here. You could have done angle, angle, side, right? But this one, angle, side, angle. Okay, number 26. This one, I see my right angles. 
So right away, I'm going to go and I'm going to look diagonally from them, and I find my hypotenuse. This hypotenuse is being shared by both triangles, so I know that it's congruent. So I'm going to put two lines, because it's another side. I'm going to put H. So now I need to see if their legs are congruent. And remember, those come off the right angle. So do we have a leg mark congruent? Yes, and so that's L, and that's L. So these two are congruent by hypotenuse leg. Now we just need to match up the congruency statement. So it goes A, B, D. So it goes along the short sign here and up the hypotenuse. So we got to go along the short side and up the hypotenuse. So C, D, B. All right, question 28. This one, you've got overlapping triangles. So we have to look at what they share, and we also have to mark about what they're telling us is congruent. So we said segment KS is congruent to segment MR. So here's KS, and it's congruent to MR. You mark it like that. They also said angle KSR, so this one right here, is congruent to MRS. So here's MRS. So this angle right there. So those two angles are congruent, those two sides are congruent. Well, think about it. Right here, you see this bottom part down there? Do you notice how both triangles share that? Guess what? That's another side that's congruent. So these two are congruent by what? Side, angle, side. And KRS, so we're going along the L, is congruent to MRS. All right, on um, these ones, you have to tell what else we need to know in order to prove them congruent with the given postulate. So first, they tell us that angle N is congruent to angle Y. So we'll mark those. They also tell us that segment NO is congruent to segment YZ. So now we need to figure out what other thing we need to know to be congruent. So we need to know right now, let's see, we want to use angle side angle, right? Angle side angle. So this side has to be between the two angles. So my only other angle that I can use is going to be Z and O. So we'd have to know that those are congruent. So we would have to know that angle Z is congruent to angle O. All right, now we're here with slope, okay? Um, you got to remember the slope formula. M is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And they're going to give you some of these where you're going to have to figure out the uh, x value or the y value that's going to make, uh, that's going to give you the desired slope. So number 32, we want the slope to be undefined. And you can remember, uh, undefined means that you have a 0 in the bottom of our slope. So we're trying to get this x2 minus x1 to be 0. So we'll go on ahead and we'll plug in here. So m equals uh, y2 is negative 4 minus, and y1 is negative 2 over, now x2, we don't know what it is, so I'm just going to call it x. Minus, now x1 is 5. Now, do we care about what the top number is for undefined? No. So this part doesn't really matter. We care about this, and we want it to be 0. So we got x minus 5 equals 0. Let's we'll solve that for x. Add 5, add 5. x equals 5. And that's it. So in order for the slope to be undefined, x has to be 5. Okay, question 34. It says we want to determine uh, if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So this one, remember, you've got to look at the slopes. So from our first one, the slope is negative 2 thirds. On this one, do you see how our y is not alone? We have to solve for y. So 
So first we're going to add 3x. Add 3x. So 2y <clears throat> equals 3x plus 6. Now get rid of that 2 by dividing. So y equals 3 over 2x plus 3. Now our slope is 3 over 2. So negative 2 thirds and positive 3 over 2. They are negative reciprocal, so they are perpendicular. Okay, 38. Determine the value of A that would make the two lines perpendicular. So first we have to solve this one for Y all the time. So we just have to add 4X over here. So Y equals 4X plus 6. So our original slope is 4, and we want perpendicular, so we need the negative reciprocal. So first is positive, it's going to become negative. Now 4, the reciprocal of that is 1 fourth. So A would have to be negative 1 fourth. Number 40. Determine the value of A that would make the two lines parallel. So parallel means same slope. So let's solve this one for uh, y. So we are going to do 3x minus 4y equals 8. Okay. Minus 3x minus 3x. So negative 4y equals negative 3x plus 8. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. Divide that one by negative 4. We get y equals negative divided by negative is a positive, and it's 3 fourths x. And positive divided by negative is a negative, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So parallel. Our slope is 3 fourths, so A has to be 3 fourths because we want it to be the same. Okay, 42. It says write the equation in standard form of the line and passes through the point 3, negative 2 and is parallel to the line uh, y equals 2 thirds x minus 1 third. Okay, parallel. Slope is going to be the same, so our slope is going to be 2 thirds. Now I'm going to use the y equals mx plus b method to find my y-intercept. And then I'll talk about standard form in a second. So we're going to plug in. This is our x, that's our y. So negative 2 equals uh, m, that's 2 thirds, because we want parallel, it's got to stay the same, times 3 plus b. So now we'll multiply. Negative 2 equals 2 thirds times 3 is 2 plus b minus 2, minus 2, so negative 2 and another negative 2, that's negative 4. So b equals negative 4. So we get y equals 2 thirds x minus 4. Now standard form is just taking the x term to the other side. So we will subtract 2 thirds x and subtract 2 thirds x. So we get negative 2 thirds x plus y equals negative 4, and that's your standard form. Okay, but on the test, you don't have to worry too much about standard form. You have to be able to at least get the y equals mx plus b. All right, so that's it for the review. Um, done half the problems with you guys. The other ones are very similar. The only ones that you don't really have to worry about are 39 and 41. Okay. Um, I will do one quick example, though, down here. Uh, let me scroll down, get some blank space. Don't worry about these problems. You don't have them. It's okay. Um, I'm going to do one here about the triangle inequality theorem. Okay. Uh, it's just about the sides of a triangle. So you have to remember the short plus the medium side has to be greater than the long side. So for example, um, if you have 7, 8, and 15, that cannot be a triangle because 7 plus 8 is less than 15. So not a triangle. However, if it was 8 and 8 and 15, 8 plus 8 is greater than 15, so it is a triangle. And that's pretty much all you have to know about the triangle inequality there. So if you're still a little confused on that, just look at this problem. That's all you gotta do. You just investigate the side lengths they give you, add the short and the medium. It's gotta be greater than the long one. 
If it is, then it is a triangle. If it's not, then it's not a triangle. And that's it. All right, I'll see you guys later, and good luck tomorrow. Bye.